Hello students, welcome to EPG Parsala. I am Anup Kumar Kapoor from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module Skull Suture Pattern, Individualization Based on Suture Patterns from the paper Forensic Anthropology. The objectives are the first to determine the identity of the disease, to be able to define the process of examining the size, shape, and structure of a human skull, to be able to classify types of cranial sutures, identifying the unknown human remains through cranial records and craniofacial bones, age estimation of both the living and the diseased, determining the gender of an unidentified individual, and elicitating the ethnicity from the cranium remains. Forensic anthropologists work with human skull to determine the identity of the disease. Indeed, in the present times of frequent air travel, accidents and mass disasters, the identification of individuals from suture pattern will be effective for setting insurance claims showing certainty of death of a particular individual and the performance of last rites. In medical legal cases and mass disasters, the identification of individual is critical. Individualization may refer to the discrimination or perception of the individual with a group of or species. The bones, the teeth of the craniofacial complex key identification tools for the forensic anthropologists effectively distinguish one person from other and one population from one other and are used to determine the race, age and sex of a person. Human skull. The skull refers to the bones which constitute the skeleton of the head and face, including the mandible. The term cranium is used to describe the skull without the mandible. The cranium is divided into an upper box-like part of the calvarium, which contains the brain and lower anterior part, which forms the facial skeleton. The fact that the primary shape of the skull is genetically determined is well demonstrated by transplantation of embryonic skeleton tissues and organ culture studies. Other characteristics of the bone seems to be self-determined. Mechanical influences may not be operative at the time of establishment of the primary form of the bone. Later on, muscles become active and may influence bone growth even in the prenatal life. When we see a skull, there are 29 bones in the skull. First we take cranium. There are 8 craniums, then face 14 bones, in higher bone 1, auditory bone 6. That comes to 29 bones in the skull. The skull consists of 29 bones, I told you earlier, which is in the adult are firmly united with each other except for the mandible. The immobile joints in the skull are called sutures. The edges of bones forming these joints are frequently serrated so that they interlock. The brain is located inside the cranial wall, a space formed by bones of the skull and skull base. Everything inside the cranial wall is intracranial and everything outside is extra cranial. Skull bones. Bones of the skull and the skull base that is frontal, parietal, occipital, ethmoid, siphonoid and temporal bones that ossify separately and gradually become united at the skull sutures. The skull has inner and outer tables of cortical bone with central calcius bone called Deploy. A human skull is almost full size at birth. However, the eight bones that make up the cranium 
are not yet fused together. This means that the skull can flex and deform during birth, making it easier to deliver a baby through the narrow birth canal. This individual plates are bone fused together after about 24 months to form the adult form of skull. Now we can see from this table that is cranium, single bone and paired bone. Then we have frontal, occipital, sphenoid and ethmoid in the single bone, whereas it is the paired bone, it is parietal and temporal. Then we take face, it is mandible or vomer. In the case of paired bone, it is maxillary, zygomatic, lacrimal, nasal, inferior, nasal, conchi and palatine. Then half bone, high foot bone, then auditory ossicles. In the paired bone, we have malleus, incus, astapis. Exterior of the skull. The skull may be viewed in different aspects from above, below, behind, and front and the sides. Accordingly, they have been named as far. Norma verticalis, when view from the above. Norma occipitalis, when you view from the behind. Norma frontalis, view from the front. Norma lateralis, when you view from the side. Norma basalis, when you view from the below. Now we have five photographs of the skull. They show different sides. That is the top, back, front, side, and base. So they have different skull may be viewed in different aspects. Cranial sutures. The main structure of the skull are the coronal, sagittal, lambdoid, and squamosal sutures. The metopic suture, that is the frontal suture, is variably present in adults. Now the coronal suture unites the frontal bone with the parietal bones. Sagittal suture unites with two parietal bones in the midline. Then occipito mastoid suture unites the temporal bone with the occipital bone. Lambdoid suture unites the parietal bone with the occipital bone. Squamous suture unites the squamous portion of the temporal bone with the parietal bones. Metopic suture, if present, unites the two frontal bones. Parieto mastoidal suture unites the parietal bones with the temporal bones. Now it is important to tell you that it is the metopic suture which is first suture fused at the age of two years. Then again when we see the coronal suture, sagittal suture and lambdoid suture, they are easily, we can distinguish between these sutures on the skull. Structure and development of human skull. Human skull varies in their shape and gross appearance. Their shape and structure is affected by genetic, metabolic, and mechanical factors. Each skull is the result of a long functional history through innumerable successive generations. Human skull is one of the hardest structures of the body. It also possesses a certain degree of toughness and elasticity. Now when we say first, cranial morphology differs dramatically in humans due to the uniquely large brains that humans have compared to body mass. It is quite distinct because it has a large, rounded brain case and flat or orthognathic face in profile. Then comes U-shaped singular construction of the human mandible. Then comes human crania are oriented on a vertical axis and the orbits are located in front and the above, the nasal aperture. These orientations also cause the position of the firmament magnum to be located inferiorly in humans. When we see from this table, first is large, barbarous vault, small size, then vault relatively smooth, then inferior monomag magnum, chin present, orbits at front, above nasal aperture, and lastly, U-shaped mandible, there is no midline separation.
skull suture development. The human calvarium is formed primarily from five bones, the paired frontal and parietal bones and the unpaired interparietal bone. The canal sutures allow for deformation of the skull during birth and subsequent growth of the skull. The frontal bones are separated along the midline by the metopic suture and the parietal bones are separated by sagittal suture. The coronal suture separates the frontal and parietal bones and the lambdoid suture separates the parietal bone from the single occipital bone posteriorly. These bones are formed by intramembranous ossification and growth occurs perpendicular to the orientation of the suture. In normal development, the metopic suture undergoes fusion during the first year of life, while other sutures fuse at various times during adulthood. The plates of membranous bones making up the calvarium of the skull are each derived from the primary ossification center from which bone formation spreads outward. However, the individual plates do not fuse with each other during perinatal development. As a consequence, newborn babies have uncrossed, that is, open sutures and frontalias. These temporary discontinuities between the bones of the calvarium aid passage of the head through birth canal at childbirth and permits an increase in the size of the skull to match brain growth after birth. The posterior, that is the smaller frontale closes during the first year and the anterior, that is the larger frontale closes during the second year after birth. However, some of the sutures remain open until adulthood. Determining Identity Through Human Skull The bones and the teeth of the craniofacial complex, key identification tools for the forensic odontologist or anthropologist, effectively distinguish one person from other and one population from another and are used to determine the race, age, sex of a person. Age estimation of both the living and the diseased. Human skull clues as to age of skeletal remains may make an estimation of age possible. There are practical criminal justice considerations from the age of bone. The estimation of age at death is an essential part in the reconstruction of population demographics and the individual analysis of human remains. After a person has reached adulthood, approximately 20 to 30 years, bones stop growing. Changes to the bones are more subtle and there are few places on the skeleton where changes can be directly related to age. There are some ossificatory processes of the immature skull which are useful in ascertaining the age of individual at death. Though the use of suture closure to designate age has been challenged in recent years. This criticism is based on the evidence of high intra-group variability, yet in a large number of cases, this procedure is reliable. Now the first, the frontal bone at birth consists of two halves which usually begins to unite in the second post natal ear. However, in certain proportion of cases, this medial frontal suture or the metopic suture may remain open throughout life, thus demonstrating the phenomena of metopism. Second, the occipital bone at birth is in four parts, an upper part, two lateral portions and a basilar part, the upper portion, that is squama, unites to the lateral portion by the end of the fifth year. This later part join the basilar part before the seventh year. Later on, the basilar part unites to the siphonoid bone by strip of cartilage up to the twentieth year. The closure of the basilar suture clearly indicates 
that the skull is that of an adult. An overview of milestone studies in suture development according to Toad and Loin, each cranial suture presents two suspects. The first endocranial seen on the inside of the skull and the ectocranial seen at the outside of the skull. Now here it, it is very interesting whenever you want to observe the sutures. When you see endocranial suture, they fuse first. And after 10 years, the outside sutures are fused. So the difference between the endocranial and ectocranial is of 10 years. Now closer begins approximately about the same time in both aspects. However, the endocranial suture is more regular and reliable. It may be kept in mind that sometimes there may be lapsed union in which bone heaps up along the edges of a suture without the closure of the suture taking place. Such lapsed union may affect the whole of the suture or part of it. It is usually common in the sagittal and lambdoid suture. Now we see the cranial suture closure. There are different sutures that is sagittal, condal, lambdoid, masto, occipital, saphenotemporal, squasus, parietomastoid, saphenoparietal, saphenofront. All these sutures on the skull, they close in different times, which has been shown in the tip. Now take first, that is the sagittal suture. Now the commencement of the closure of this suture starts from 20 years to 26th year and the termination of the peak reaches at the age of 29 years. Before I say proceed further, I would like to inform you students that from the suture first fuse at the center of the total length of the suture. From the center it start moves to both the directions. Sometimes you may see on a skull there are some sutures like sagittal or coronal suture lightly fuse, right, or partially fuse. It means the closure have started of that particular suture. Now we take the coronal suture. Now it starts from 21st years to 29 years and the termination of the peak that varies from 29 to 50 years. It may add one or two years more. Then we have lambdoid suture. Again, it varies from 21st year to 26th years and terminates the complete at the age of 30 years. Then we have masto occipital suture. They start from 26th year to 33rd year and then termination at the old age around 60 years. Then saphino temporal suture that start from 36 or 37th year and goes up to or the fuse at the age of 65 years. Then squamous suture, they start fusing at 38 years and terminate at 39 years. Then parietomastoid suture start from 39 and goes up to 50 years and the termination is the fuse at the age of 64 years. Then saphenoparietal that is from 28 to 38th year and then termination takes place early 60s. Then saphenofrontal that the commencement of the suture starts from 28th to 38th year and it goes the termination takes place at the age of 65 years. Now here I would like to inform you that there is a one saphenobasal suture that is at the base of the skull which fuses at the age of 20 years and in case you want to you get a skull where the fusion has taking place that is saphenobasal suture is fused at that means it is more than 20 years of age. It is an adult skull. In, in case it is not fused, then it is not the adult skull and you can determine the sex of the given skull. A cranium can be safely and conveniently classified into the following age categories. First is young adult, that is 21 to 35 years of age, middle 
is adult 36 to 35 years of age, old adult 56 to 75 years of age, and very old adult 75 years to more than that. I would like to tell you, student, this classification varies from country to country and ethnic groups. It has been observed that in some ethnic groups, uh, aging is start early. In some other ethnic groups, aging age is start at later stage. So it is a population characteristics, but automatically the person has to age. Look for the central suture, the squirrely line that runs the length of the skull and note whether is it the completely fuse? If it is, the remains are likely to be someone older than 35 years. Look for a second line at the front of the skull, the coronal suture, which fully fuses by age. What? The suture at the back of the skull, that is the lambdoid suture, begins closing at the age of 20 and by age 30 would have closed. By about age 32, the suture running across the top of the skull, that is the sagittal suture, back to front would have closed. By about age 50, the suture running side to side over the top of the skull near the front, that is the coronal suture, would have closed. Now we can see the from this table, that is chronological basis of sex differences. On one side, the features have been shown, then we have the male and the female. First is the canal capacity. Male have always higher canal capacity than the female, and the 150 to 200 cc is less than males. Again, it varies from ethnic group to ethnic group. The second comes occipital crest and nuchal lines. In the case of males, it is muscular ridges and crest more marked, whereas in the female, none traces are medium. Then we take the frontal bone. In the case of male, it is mortally and markedly sloping. In the case of female, it is straight or slightly sloping. Then sobrabital ridges. In the case of male, it is moderate to pronounced. In the case of female, traces to moderate. Then orbits, in the case of male, low and broad, quadrangular, borders dull, whereas in the case of female, it is high, rounded, border sharp. Then zygomatic arches, medium to heavy, in the case of female, cylinder to medium. Then mastoid process, in the case of male, medium to large, in the case of female, small to medium. Then malar bone, it is higher to stouter in males, and in the case of female, it is lower and more delicate. In the case of mandible, in males, greater in size, thickness, and weight, higher symphysis, border ramus, and less obtuse gonial angle. In the case of female, it is moderate, size and stock, low symphysis and body, rounded and smooth. Now here I would like to tell you that there are many characteristics by which you can differentiate between the sex of the skull. But the important is, first is the frontal. In the case of male, it is sloping or slanting or receding. In the case of female, it is vertical. Then comes orbits. It is Squarish in the case of males and rounded in the case of females. Zygomatic arches are always heavy or medium to heavy in the case of males. And then parietal and frontal eminences are prominent, right? There's also very important characteristics to differentiate between the male and the female skull. And the skull vault is curved in the case of males, whereas skull vault is flat in the case of females because the frontal and the parietal eminences come to one height, both the eminences in the case of female. That's why the skull wall becomes flat. Determination of sex. A sexual diagnosis from fragmentary isolated remains without possibility of comparison is extremely difficult as in case of fossils hominids. Estimation of sex 
incomplete human skull is usually easily provided it is post pubertal sexual differences are marked in pelvis and skull but not equally in all the populations to diagnose sex from a skull is a rather difficult task because a female skull can show exceptional masculine character similarly the male skull can also show feminine characters moreover the sexual differences between the skull may be race specific sex determination may be easier in whites than in negroids or mongoloids a number of features descriptive and mythic characters must be considered together the coexistence of several features may permit a judgment method of identification from the suture pattern an effective method of identification from the suture pattern found on the ectocranial surface of the skull means physical pattern evidence which shows that each skull possesses a unique configuration of suture formation the suture spikes projections denticulate recesses and other types of irregularities are so varied that they are thought to be as individuals as finger rich in order to have confidence in the use of future patterns for personal identification the following three basic principles must be established first individual skull suture pattern should be so highly variable that their characteristics even in a subdivision of suture are not duplicated elsewhere in the suture in other sutures or in a different individual second the configuration and the details of individual suture pattern should be permanent third the configuration types should individually be variable but varying within limits which permit systematic classification nevertheless the personal identification of the dead as well as the living through surface configuration formed on the ectocranial suture is valuable system which may assume greater importance in the near future uniqueness of suture evaluation of suture pattern shows that the skull suture pattern configurations are unique the frequencies of patterns in both the sexes have been found to be more or less equal and hence the attribution of sex to skull from suture patterns and the configuration is questionable suture configurations are found to be not bilaterally symmetrical the bilateral differences is exhibited by the pattern configuration that suture pattern in a skull highly individualistic and patternings are not duplicated in other segment of the same suture permanence of suture pattern suture patterns can only be used as a means of identifying a person if the pre mortem pattern is recorded radiographically although lateral and oblique views may contain suture lines the anterior posterior view is most suitable for radiographically recording the sutures of the purpose of person identification in older individuals the number of segment recorded radiographically is found to decrease gradually with age progression systematic classification of suture patterns a system of classification of suture patterns has been evolved by gathering the patterns into the following 10 classes the first is sare type sutures second denticulate type of suture third serrated dentate type of suture fourth dentated sare type suture fifth wavy type suture six crenate type of suture seven undulate type of suture eight close type of suture then columnar type of suture and finally it is complicated type of suture the ectocranial suture patterns in them are highly individualistic and that no two skulls can ever have an identical pattern 
a posty method of identification of the skull he studied by comparison of radiographic with visible skull suture patterns positive identification through radiographic comparison of antemortem and postmortem kidney suture patterns evaluated in light of these criteria computed tomography that is ct scans may prove a more useful modality for positive identification due to better resolution and greater availability the skull wall is a dynamic structure formed from the multiple membranous flat bones connected at the edges of fibrous sutures as the brain grows during development the free expansion of the cranium occurs at the sutures now i would like to tell you the students whatever we have been talking about the sutures all these sutures pattern have been taken from the european data and very few studies have been carried out on indian data and mostly the carried out by modi et al group of medical doctors now in india we need this type of data to be collected by anthropologists and medical doctors because in india we have more than 5000 ethnic groups and that is a another population characteristics when we see the variability of sutures in different human skulls facial superimposition this anatomic material can be used for identification when the skull and facial bones are used as a foundation for the reconstruction of facial soft tissues with the use of standard anthropological thickness measurements at specific points on the face soft tissue thickness points can be connected with the sculpting clay and the reconstructed features can sometimes be digitized on a computer screen because computers permit the addition of components directly to cranial features computers have been useful for techniques involved facial superimposition the underlying skeleton structures can thus be viewed below the soft tissues providing a means to check its accuracy the result of these techniques is a recreation of the contour of the soft tissue features that permits visual identification various version can then be stored and reproduced for comparison now we summarize this module bones are live and carry all life functions the condition of bones can tell investigator about a person's health and nutrition during life the identification of factors differentially expressed in fusing sutures has led to multiple targets for future research evaluation of suture pattern shows that the skull suture pattern configurations are unique individual skull sutures pattern should be so highly variable that their characteristics even in a subdivision of suture are not duplicated elsewhere in the suture in other sutures or in a different individual thank you